Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this JMeter tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn about the thread group in detail with the real-time example. So, let's begin. Thread group in the JMeter plays really important role because in thread group, we have to define the number of users for our performance or the load test, right? So, in order to understand thread group in detail, let's open our test which we created in our previous sessions and then we will implement some kind of a different strategies which can reflect in the real time okay so open this test now and here you know this this is our thread group we use that thread group right in this particular thread group we have a multiple options we have to provide the name comments action to be taken after a sampler error then we have this thread properties okay so we have these three sections here in in this particular thread group first the most important is that we need to name our thread group which is relevant to your test. For example, if we need to test our sign up, okay, where multiple users will be coming up and signing up on our application. So your name should be reflecting to something related to sign up. So tomorrow there might be multiple thread groups in your test. So it would be easier for you to identify what this particular thread group will do. Okay, because every action or every request is under this thread group. Okay, so this thread group will execute this particular scenario and then give us the results. So that's how it works. Okay, so always name it properly. Okay, then if you want to give some comments, so comments might be very useful when you are working in a team and you want to highlight something you need to put or give some information to your colleagues or your team members then this comments will be very useful so use that comments in that particular case okay then we have this action to be taken after a sampler error so this is a sample okay this is a sampler right and this is saying that what your script should do once it got some error okay so usually in 90 percent cases what we will do is that we will go with this continue option the reason to use this continue option is that we need to see uh, there may there might be some you know five percent failures that's fine but we need to know what happened with the 95 percent of the users or the flows okay so that's why in most of the cases we will go with this continue option in case if there is an error right then we have this start next thread loop okay then we have stop thread stop test stop test now okay so what is start next thread loop we haven't yet discussed about the looping here but the idea here is that it will move to the next loop we will discuss this looping uh, shortly but right now just un understand this thing this start next thread loop will start the next loop here okay then a stop thread means it will stop that particular user a stop test means it will stop your test and then stop test now so stop test and stop test now looks like similar to you okay but there is a difference stop test will stop your test but whatever your threads will be doing they will complete their operations however in a stop test now it will stop your threads or users immediately maybe in the half of your uh, you know flow or execution okay so that's a difference between stop test and stop test now now when you have to use these options especially in some cases you might need to use these options in the real-time scenarios but mostly these option will be used when you are actually debugging your skips so you want to see what is happening in case of the failures you want to stop you want you don't want to execute all your script if you face some failures because you you are just trying to validate your script not executing an actual performance test okay so these options are very much helpful when you are debugging your script now we have these thread properties thread properties has multiple options like number of threads ramp up time loop count okay now let's discuss each and every option here okay so the the first one is a number of thread so number of thread is basically really simple here you need to define the number of users you want for your performance test okay so tomorrow you if you want to test your application on 100 users you need to define 100 here then we have this ramp up time so what happens in the real time is that if your application is being used by 1000 users, so it is less likely that 1000 users are performing the same function and features at the very same time. 
there's always some time difference when actual users are performing some actions okay so we need to mimic or we need to replicate this thing in the jmeter so now what this ramp up time will do for us for example if i'm giving here at as a 50 users and i'm giving it here as a 10 second of the ramp up time so now what will it do okay so it will perform or these 50 users will be on the application within this 10 second okay so they gradually coming up these 50 users are gradually coming up on the application and in 10 seconds we have all these 50 users on the application okay then we have this option loop count and infinite so usually we don't go with the infinite because we want our test script to stop at some time okay and loop means how many times i need to execute this scenario okay this 50 users coming on the application in 10 seconds so how many times i want to execute this one for example if i want this scenario to be executed for five times okay so i need to select here as a five so this five 50 users coming into the application in 10 seconds and this scenario will repeat for the time for five times okay right now i'm executing this for one so we can see that how it works okay so just execute this one and see what happens so you can see the user are coming up on the application and it these all 50 users will be on the application in 10 seconds okay so they started from here and they start ended here so till here it took you know 10 seconds for these 50 users to come up on the application or to perform these actions right then for example so uh, let me reduce this number of uh, users here okay uh, let me do it like 10 users coming onto the application in you know two seconds and now let's increase the count okay and i'm removing this one from here so that we can see how it works so you will see that the number of iterations is multiplying okay so how many times it should get executed so 10 means if we are looping it into 2 so 20 times this request will get executed so if you go here if you count here so this request got executed 20 times so this is how looping works and then we have this infinite option obviously we don't need our ex script to execute forever right so if we choose this option here then we have to use some options from here for example we need to specify the thread time okay in some cases we really don't know how many iterations we need okay in that particular case what happens is that we need to define a time for example uh, we saying that all users should be on the application in 30 seconds okay duration in 30 seconds okay so how many iterations are required we don't know okay so let's execute this one and let's see how it works okay so you'll see they are gradually increasing okay and now the graph is quite bigger than or larger than what we got previously okay so you see it is still running they are coming up gradually 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 on the application till the 30th second you see still they are going 23 seconds 24 okay 25 so it will stop when the 30 seconds will be completed okay so now it's completed you can see so that's how this feature works secondly what what if i need to execute or start my test without with some delay so in order to give some delay let's suppose i want to delay for five seconds so when i start my execution this thread will wait for five seconds then it will start the execution okay so let's see this how it works okay and just execute this again okay and let's see you will see that it will wait for five seconds then it will start execution okay you will see that so you can see it wait for five seconds then after five seconds it will start execution and it will complete you know the 30 seconds here okay 
So by using these options, you will mimic the real time scenarios, how you want these users, you know, on your applications, how they should come on your application. Okay, so that's how it works. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. We hope that you have learned something today. If you like our content, please subscribe our channel, like, share and comment. Thank you so much once again and see you in the next lecture.